when we got to uh, LaVale, we uh, picked up an MSP, Maryland State Police Escort, and uh, we had chains on the back wheels, so we, he told us he better put them on the front as well. So we were chained up all the way around. Uh, left LaVale, came up to Frostburg, we were Route 36, I uh, went down through uh, Barton, Midland, you folks from that area know the, what I'm talking of. Into uh, Coney, we turned right at the traffic light at Love's grocery store and went up over the mountain. When the mountain flattened up it, on the top, there was a bulldozer in front of us plowing uh, to make us a road to get into the crash site. There was about that much snow on the ground. We uh, established a command post, and the captain and one man made an, in an initial reconnaissance of the area. There were fires burning, stumps of trees that had been cut off, like he cut them with a saw. And uh, once we found the uh, weapons, we knew what we were looking for. There was no way to disguise a thermonuclear bomb, a Mark 53. So uh, we then put out all the fires but one. We left that baby burn all night, and that was our heat. Uh, about an hour later, CMP telephone come up the mountain and uh, nailed a uh, telephone to the tree, to a, to a tree, and we had communications with Fort Meade. They, in turn, had communications with uh, the Air Force, and uh, the Air Force relayed the information up to us of what they wanted us to, steps that they wanted us to, to take to uh, render these items uh, explosively safe. Uh, once we were there, we uh, went down to the site where the, bomb, the uh, plane had crashed, and we located two nuclear weapons that were in the plane when it crashed. The nuclear weapons had uh, become dislodged from the airplane uh, and were covered with snow. It was a very uh, wintry day in the Western Maryland mountains. There were three of us at the site initially, myself, Master Sergeant Ramsley, and Sergeant Coltrane. Uh, we, first of all, uh, checked with using Geiger counters to make sure that there was no background radi no radiation, only background radiation. Once we determined that there was no radiation emanating from the bombs, Sergeant Coltrane and myself proceeded down to the crash site. Uh, we located the bombs and we were on the uh, walkie talkies talking to my first sergeant back in the command post. And he had the manuals out that we always have with us that tells us what procedures we need to go through in order to make sure that there is not a nuclear accident, nuclear incident. And uh, going through those procedures, I opened up the case of the bomb going through the parachute pack in the back and went through the disarming procedures, uh, which consisted of disconnecting certain wires and uh, basically breaking the electrical contact between the fuse and the bomb. That was the basic procedures that, that we went through to make sure there was no nuclear explosion at that point in time. Being a young 26-year-old first lieutenant, back in those days, not a lot scared me. However, I knew the severity of the situation. Uh, fortunately, uh, the telephone company had managed to put in a landline very, very close to the actual site, within 100 yards of the site. And uh, we were able to communicate on the phone with our headquarters and get an additional instructions. In fact, um, I was on the phone at one time with uh, an officer at, at SAC headquarters, the Supreme uh, Air Force Command in uh, Omaha, Nebraska, and they were giving me instructions on what to do. And their main emphasis was to just do the minimum amount necessary 
to make sure that there's no nuclear explosion. And that's basically what we did. 